Hello, hello, hello. What's happening? And welcome back to another episode of In My City, sponsored by No Chill Radio. Today, as always, we have a very special guest on today. Let me tell y'all something about this lady right here, but let, let me go ahead and get the, the proper introduction out of the way. She's an actress, singer, songwriter, and of course, you know her from her ever so famous song, As We Lay. Y'all, let me tell y'all, this lady right here, let me introduce to you the legendary queen herself, Miss Shirley Murdoch, everybody. Wow, you are too kind. You're too kind. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How about you, baby? I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain at all. How is uh, how's the pandemic been treating you so far? Just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been rough. it's been rough and tumble, but you know, it's, it's been our faith that has kept us afloat. And, you know, I saw it as a time for us to kind of hit reset in our lives, you know, in different areas of our lives, whether it's your, you know, your personal relationship with your, you know, your mate, you know, your children, or, you know, even with your business, it forced us to deep, to, to, to deep, deep way down in the crevices of creativity, you know, and come up with something else, you know, so like some, we, we, many of us had to reinvent ourselves because you know what we do you know the concerts and the plays and, the, and, yeah. and singing in church all that the, the kibosh got put on that but you know it, it is really giving us an opportunity to stretch ourselves and and we 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 we, we did not want to waste a good pandemic we're to come out stronger better wiser and productive i know that's right you better say it <laughs> <laughs> now since the age of 15 you wanted to have a gospel career how did you get started started with Roger Troutman and how did that come about? Well, um, as a young girl, I recognized that my voice is absolutely a gift from God. Um, not only because of how it made me feel, but how it made people feel when they, when they heard me sing. And, um, so I know that, um, that, that God has touched my, my voice. It's anointed. That means that God, his presence is on my voice. So I didn't take that lightly. And when I started growing in my relationship with God, I thought that the avenue that I would go, the direction would be gospel music, but those doors never opened for me. Uh, I just kept getting many, many opportunities to sing mainstream. I kept turning it down, Tabitha. And then when I, I was ministering with a, a, a crusade that did like a revival in various cities throughout the country for a week. And that crusade was called Tetric. It stood for the end time revival evangelistic crusade so we did crusades and you know and we we taped it on a cassette tape that tell you how long ago that was <laughs> but uh you know woo. so my, my, my cousin yeah they, they, woo. my cousin worked for Trotman Enterprises you know for with, with the Trotman brothers and she came to visit um my my family in Toledo while I was away and my mother let her hear this tape of me singing Jesus is love by Lionel Richie and the Commodores so she she begged my mom to let her take a copy of it back and she would promise to make copies for her. She let Roger Troutman and his brother Larry uh, Troutman hear it and they wanted to know like, who is this girl? And does she want to make records? So when I came home, the family was geek girl. They're like, woo, woo, Roger Troutman and Zap. I'm like, okay, who's Roger and what's a Zap? <laughs> Because you know, I really was more into gospel. I was more into gospel music, but um, yeah. my, my my older sister and I went to Dayton to talk to them, and I was saying, well, you know, I really want to do gospel. I don't really want to do R and B, but they didn't have any connections in that area. But they said, if you ever want to give this a try, we want to help you. So. Tabitha, I left there scratching my head again, like, God, how come this is the only door that's opening? Could this be the door that you have for me? So, honey, I just walked by faith through the open door, and the rest is history. Mm. Oh, I know that's right. Oh, wee, you gave me chills. Don't you start nothing up in here. <laughs> <laughs> so now, you can say, well, you know, what soon you comes out, you. <laughs> I know that's right. Oh, listen, I, I, got on, I ain't got on the right hair for that to come out today. <laughs> So you ain't got to worry about it then. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, your hit single, As We Lay. There was an important, uh, something that you said in there, and I want to know why that was so important to you. And you said, God's not going to give you another woman's man. Why yeah, was this so important to you? Because uh, Kelly Price redid the song. She loved it so much. And at the time when I put the record out, there was no video. So, you know, people... People would hear the song. All we had was the music and, and the, the different th techniques that we use with our voices, you know, to, to paint a picture in your mind. And people deal with things from their own paradigm, whatever they're going through, whatever they're in the middle of, that's that's how they view the music. But I was not the first person to sing As Relay. Um, Billy Beck from the Ohio Players 
was in a group that Roger produced called The Human Body. And it was three gentlemen. It was Larry Hatcher from, from he was a horn player for, for P-Funk. There was Ray Davis, you know, uh, Atomic Dog, that Bow Wow Wow, Yippee Yo, Yippee Yay. That was Ray yeah. Davis, God Rest His Soul, and Billy Beck from The Ohio Players. So Billy Beck actually wrote the song with Larry Troutman. And and it was on Bearsville's record, I remember, because I was still, I was recording my record at the time. And everybody thought it was going to be a hit record because, you know, it's like, People could relate because it's like everyday life or soap opera, and so yeah. when it when uh when that record did not hit, uh, I remember while we were making my record, Larry approached me about singing as we lay. I'm like, well, wait a minute, you want me to sing as we lay? I said, well, first of all, I got a problem with it <laughs> because to <laughs> me, it didn't seem like nobody was sorry about that thing because this is not something that you glorify. And so I yeah. said, okay, I'll tell you what. I will sing the song if you let me add these lyrics. And what I added was, we should have counted up the cost, but instead we got lost in the second, in the, minute, in the hour. Because, honey, every decision that you make in life is bigger than you. It, honey, it's not about you. It's about the people in your life, in your galaxy, in your orbit that you are going to affect. In the song, uh, she says, I would never want to hurt her. She would never understand that you belong to me for just one night. So, see, you know, because you know, dirt is done in the dark. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, you better say that thing, so, ma'am. You know, so, what they did, they did in the dark. But in the, in the in the next verse, when it says, "It's morning, Woo! sunlight shines across your sleeping face." You better come on through. Y'all, look at this. Y'all better. You better come through. Separate <laughs> So the, the the moral to that is. Since the dirt is done in the dark, when the light. Y'all hold on a minute. I think we lost all No, no, no. Are we still there? there, we still there? Oh, there yeah, we we're still here. When the light of day comes, that. That means that everything you did in the dark has now been exposed in the light. So now you got to face it. Too many times we make permanent decisions based upon a temporary situation. Baby, it might feel good to you right now. But what about what about when the sunlight comes shining on your sleeping face? When you have to we have you have to face the consequences of what you've done and how it affects oh. the people in your life. Honey, you end up with, with, with young girls who have daddy issues because daddy cheated on mama or mm. young guys who don't have respect for women because mama cheated on daddy. So it's, it's bigger than you. It affects the, everybody in your world. So that's why I had to be insistent upon putting that part in the song in hopes that people would not use this as a celebratory song for infidelity, but it's a sad song about regret and consequences. Whoop. Oh, I didn't. I want to end the interview right there. I don't know what, ain't nothing else to say. Goodness, ma'am. <laughs> now, let me ask you, what challenges have you faced? Because you know how judgmental people can be. Sure. It's either, you either do church music or you either do R&B. You don't do both. How, how, right. did you, how did you deal with your, you, you spiritually wanting to do gospel, but then doing R&B? Well, you know, for me, like I said, I walk by faith through the open door. Mm -hmm. And I never separated my spiritual life from my everyday life. They're one and the same. And my spiritual life informs my everyday life. So I didn't go into the music business to go out there and cut the fool, so to speak, you know, and, and lose my mind. I went into it to be who I say I am wherever God plants me. So whether it's in the club, you know, we sing them songs, the people be happy, you know, they be sad. And then we sing the songs and now they're glad. And but see, for my for my for my own self. All of my records always had a gospel, a gospel song on it. When we were making that very first record, I remember yes. we were mixing the song, girl. And I, I remember saying Roger to Larry and Roger, listen, this record cannot go out without me saying something to the Lord because I promised God that I would always, always represent. I would always ne never be ashamed of who I am or whose I am. And so what, what so this, well, do you have something? I'm like, yeah. I had a, a little short, simple song called Tribute. And it just simply says, I shall not forget what you've done for me. I shall mm -hmm. not forget how you set me free. Everywhere I go, everyone would know that Jesus lives within my soul. Thank you for this time to say what's on my mind. You're everything to me. And girl, we did that thing in one take and the record Ooh. company did not want it on the record. But Roger and Larry fought for me because they knew what it meant to me. And yes. so every record always has something inspirational or gospel uh, uh, on, on all of my projects. And uh, even in my live performance, I, I, I incorporated gospel because I feel like God puts you in certain places to be salt and to be light. And if and if and if, and if we can't go to places, then like, what good are you? You, you know, the, the Bible says that when salt has lost its savor, it's, it's it's not any good but to be trodden under the foot of men. So, you know, so for me, you know, 
and I, I didn't get discovered until I was like about 25 years old. And I'm glad about that because I had this opportunity to come into my own, to know who I was and whose I was. And I suggest any young person that's trying to get into this business, you need to know who you are before you can get into this business. Otherwise, the, the, the industry will dictate and tell you you are so for me he also planted me in a place with a with this this family this group of guys who were family oriented they were community oriented you know they they spent money building a construction company so they could build houses in the inner city and things like that so um and they knew who i was they respected me not only as a woman but as a woman of god there, nothing was there was no impropriety ever they were just like my big brothers and larry was like my surrogate father roger was my mentor he was he was like my big brother my dear dear friend so again, it's like my testimony in mainstream is not, you know, drugs and alcohol is a drug free organization. My, my testimony is not drugs and alcohol. My testimony is that the Holy Ghost to keep you if you want to be kept. So I thank and praise God for being able to maintain my relationship with God. I'm not saying I, that, that I never failed. I was, I was, I'm a perfect person, but my heart was always toward God, always toward pleasing him. And that, that, that's my walk. That's my testimony with him. So everywhere I go, everyone will know Jesus lives within my soul and what's amazing is even after that then the record company put out a double a side with me and my good friend and label mate howard hewitt so on Ooh. one side was my tribute the other side was his say amen mm, 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 mm. now when you sing how, how does it go over when you're when you're at a gospel event and you incorporate the r&b now you know how church they say church folk can be now now how does that work how does well, that go over well, you know, th there was there was a process and there was a journey. You know, did I get criticized for singing R and B and being a born again Christian? Yes, because people didn't know me. They didn't know they didn't know who I was. So I understand it. If, if you're just judging somebody from from the music or just one song, you know, I'm I'm the the totality of Shirley Murdoch is way more than just the lyrics of one song. You know, and so. Um, there, there was a journey from you know doing R and B to meeting Bishop T D Jakes. You know he was the, the the person that that God used to to be my Barnabas so to speak. That person that said, mm -hmm. okay, she's one of us. You know she legit. You know and so uh, with that you know with him in my life it was a blessing. And he said I remember he came to me and said Shirley you said you never had had an opportunity to sing gospel when I started a record label. Well, now here's your opportunity, but you can't do both. So I had to make a choice. You know I, I was I was signing the Warner Brothers. I was already but now I have this opportunity to, to fulfill the desires of my heart to sing gospel. Mm -hmm. So I went to Roger. I said, Roger, I finally have an opportunity to sing gospel. I said, and I want to be released from Warner Brothers. He said, baby, that's what you were doing when I met you. I'm not surprised. And honey, him and he and his brother, Larry, they went to Warner Brothers and did what they need to do to get me released. And I was released on paper in December of 88. They passed away April of 99. And he was happy for me, you know. So, but so uh, I, I'm going to move on. So with that in mind, so I stayed away from my music. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do R&B concerts for about, for about seven years. But what it did is it gave me an opportunity uh, to reintroduce myself to the to the church and to the gospel arena, you know, to, to that genre. So they got to know me and got to know my heart and, and got to know my life. So it, things got better because, you know, you can't really hate, a, you can't hate nobody once you know their story. Right. So, and then I had people like Yolanda Adams and people like, um, oh gosh, um, Yolanda and, oh, Ber Beverly, Beverly Crawford, who's a good friend of mine. So, uh, many people in the gospel arena who embraced me. Is, and uh, and I've been knowing the Clark sisters since ooh wee, you know, when I was living in Toledo. And Dr. Maddie Moss Clark used to have Twinkie call me to come up and do the night musicals. So I knew a lot of, a lot of the, uh, the Detroit artists and Twinkie and everybody. But God, I, I felt like one day God was going to give it back to me, but I think it, just having that hiatus was important because it gave them a chance to separate me from as we lay so they could get to know me, the person. But then one day, I, I, God slowly began to open that door for me to, 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 to get my music back again. And one thing about God, honey, when he, when he holding it in the layaway for you, <laughs> in the layback, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or hold it in the savings account, honey. It draws interest, you know. And so it was amazing. So he sl things slowly began to, you know, come together. And I'm like, okay, but I want to make sure in my heart because I didn't want to do it on my own. I said, okay, God, it's just you. Let me tell you something. This is this might really sound crazy, but it's the truth. 
I remember getting an email from a prophetic website called the Elijah List. Mm -hmm. And the title of the of the email said, God says permission granted. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. I said, okay, God. I got an email from heaven. <laughs> That's that confirmation. But but in my knower, in my spirit, I knew God was saying yes. And then uh, so what I come to understand is that God made me famous to give me a bigger platform to not only entertain people, but to bring the good news. And that's what gospel is. So now going back to your original question, how is it doing, uh, uh, incorporating them both? Well, first of all, the wisdom of how to do it, God showed me how to do it. So uh, from, from the jump, you know, well, first of all, it's like, I I, I remember I first, I said like, uh, thanks for thanks for inviting the church girl to the party. <laughs> we gonna take this thing all the way back in the day and bring it up to today, right? So I'm, I started off with an up tempo gospel song that was funky and everything like that. Then I went straight into going without you, into husband, all those songs. And at some point within the the concert, I just talk about God, just how good He is and that He loves you, He's not mad at mm. you. And isn't that good news? Don't people need to hear that? And you so right. um, it's amazing to 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 see how happy people are to hear me do those songs that they love. But then to, to turn around and say, what do you do when you've done all you can? Mm. Seem like it's never enough. Oh, and what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? You just stand when there's nothing left to do. You stand. Watch the Lord. Watch him see you through. So to sing stand and girl, it's, it's amazing. I look out into the audience and I see people touched. So mm. I'm just, I feel just so honored that God would, uh, would give me everything. I do everything it is not on the low low sometimes i'm sometimes i minister inside the church and sometimes i minister outside the church and isn't that what we're supposed to do but i understand that god gives us the measure of grace for the calling on your life mm -hmm. if you don't have the grace to go to the club stay out because <laughs> you know you don't, you don't, you don't want to get in a situation that'll jam you up if you're not called to yeah. do that, but there are people who are called to do that. So what the ones that are not called to do that, what, what I pray they would do is pray for the ones that are undergird the ones that are, because you know, our members, we got hands, we got feet, but they have different functions. So exactly. I, I shouldn't be mad at my feet. My hands should be mad at my feet because my feet can walk, <laughs> you know, or, hmm. or my knees should be mad at my mouth because my mouth can talk. That's so right. what we need to do is understand that 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 Jesus is the head and we are we are we are the body with many members. We should celebrate every beautiful thing that these members do and, and encourage one another in whatever God has called you to do. Mm, Couldn't I, I just want you to go ahead and just go ahead and have <laughs> church already with it <laughs> already. <laughs> now, you have a single called In Your Eye, which yes. is a very, very special song. Tell me about this. Yes. In Your Eyes is a song that I wrote about my husband. We'll be married 33 years in June this year. And, you know, we start, um, I met him um, in Dayton. I met him at, the, you know, at Troutman Enterprises. He was a staff producer. And uh, the first year that I was there, um, the, the second year that I was there, he came in as a staff producer. And we met and we were just two church kids in the music business. We kind of felt like we kind of cut from the same cloth. And, and he went out on the road, you know, the next year. So we just became great friends. We looked out for one another on the road. And the relationship just began to grow and he was somebody that I, I could talk about since he could play you know we, we could always do them gospel songs that didn't nobody else know <laughs> so i think that was the thing that really connected us you know um just two church kids you know in the music business and, and our relationship grew the um the friendship grew into love and so we are 33 years down the line we have a 20 a 29 year old wonderful son and wow. and uh and, and life is good and he's, he's still my best friend and I, I i would marry him over and over again and i remember one time oh. we were in japan you know and uh, i looked over at him and you know i was thinking about him and about how much i loved him and just what what he what he is to me he's he he is my friend you know he's my ride or die he he will fight me for me if he thinks there's something that's good for me and i'm going i don't want to do it you know he'll fight me for me to have somebody in your life that will fight you for you baby is a blessing you know Indeed. and so um 
I love his, I love his, his, I call his gentle brown eyes. So the song says, in your eyes, I see kindness. In your eyes, I see honesty. In your eyes, I see patience. Oh, baby, in your eyes, I see love. And that's what I see in, not only in his eyes, but that's what I feel from his heart for me. Hmm. Being married for over 30 something years, what's, it, what's the secret? What, what are y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, um, my husband teases, like he said, a lot of people who say that marriage is easy. He said they're not doing it right. Because, <laughs> you know, you are, you know, you got, you're, you got two individuals coming together. You know, you have to, you have to be willing to sacrifice, you know, in a marriage. It's a give and take. And, you know, we, you know, the man has to be willing to love his wife like Christ loved the church and he died for her, honey. <laughs> so we have to, you know, understand it's really not always about us. It's about, um being your best self, bringing your best self to the table. Mm -hmm. So, and, and so that you, and, 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 and realizing and understanding that other person's hopes and dreams and what can you do to facilitate them making that dream come true, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you're, it's, it's a partnership and it's a life partnership. See, and, and for me, see, I come from divorce. My parents divorced when I was young mm -hmm. and all of my brothers and sisters divorced, aunties and uncles. I didn't see no good marriage. I didn't see no good example of marriage. But um, I remember too uh, that um, there were some things like because of my mother and father's dynamic, I know that mama did, did things a certain way for our survival, but I had to also understand that, that, that Dale was not daddy <laughs> and I could not, I, I could not hold him hostage for the baggage of my past, you know, little girl Shirley and all the hurts and all that. So I think, I, I, I guess the best way to say it is don't confuse the demons of your past with the angels mm. of your present. Mm. You'll miss the boat, you know, you'll miss Ooh. somebody because you're holding them hostage for what somebody else did. You know, if, if Dale didn't do it, then why, why, why am I holding him hostage? You see? And so, so I, I learned that if, if, if I was going to be successful, I had to, to, to take the dynamics that were good and, and the strengths of my mom and something she might've went overboard, but I know it was for our protection, but that was not my life. That was not my story. I, I, I could not let that dictate how I dealt with my husband. So it was like, if we have to um, decide how we're going to walk down this, this path together and make our own decisions together. And um, so uh, in the interim, what, what ended up happening, like I said, you know, we're 30, 30, almost 33 years down the line. I had to make a decision. I can't do it mama's way. I can't do it the way brothers and sisters did it, aunties or uncles and nobody else. We have to start fresh. And so um, at, at that point, it's like, okay, the, buck, the, the divorce curse has got to stop here. And what can I do to make it stop here? But I will say that as the years have went by, I have brothers and sisters who are married. I have nieces and nephews who are married. So marriages came back into my family, but because I think they saw it working in, in our in our life, in our in our relationship. So whatever's going on in your life, you've got those those generational curses, you know. Mm. The, it, honey, if somebody had stopped it before it got to you, <laughs> the, the buck would have stopped there. But you've got to decide at some point in your life, enough is enough. Also wrote a song called "I Love Me Better Than That." Then to lay here and cry, to stay here and die. I, 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 I'm gonna get my life back. I know I made my mistakes, but it's never too late. But in that song, in the vampire says, "I want my joy back. I want my peace back. I want mm. my dreams back. My hope, my self-esteem back. I want my keys back. Whether it's my physical keys or the key to my heart, I want it back because I love right. it better than that." So you know, I want to put the, have that kind of song in the atmosphere to encourage. there okay can you hear me okay yes ma'am yeah so i uh that, that song was is, is empowering you know so even again with the marriage you know the buck's got to stop somewhere if it's drugs you know if whatever whatever it is that's 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 taking the joy from your family you, the, at some point you got to decide okay the buck gonna stop here it's not gonna go for another generation and when you give that to god and you bring him into your life he will set you on a path that will put you right on your destiny mm, 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 mm. goodness that is the most powerful thing uh to realize that you were probably the generate the person that broke the generational curse in your family with praise god <laughs> Oh, goodness, ma'am. Jeez, you're speaking today. My whole entire family is watching and you are speaking, you are saying something. 
right now and i thank you i can't thank you enough this is more than what i more than what i could have asked for and anybody else that's watching i know it is because i'm reading the comments and so what everybody is saying to you i'm reading them um praise god most people don't know that you've been in some films now is there something else you're working on like these days are you gonna try to pursue that a little bit more these days yeah well you know um <laughs> God is God. God is something else, you know. He he, yeah, he's, he a, he's a he's a dream giver, a dream keeper, and a dream fulfiller. So what you know, I believe that that dreams are. First of all, everybody has it. God's given everybody a dream. Everybody at some point in their life has had this glimpse of their future self. You know, um, even as a little girl, I saw myself doing what I'm doing now, and I saw mm -hmm. it through watching a black and white Saturday matinee with a little curly haired white girl by the name of Shirley Temple, okay? Her name was Shirley, she could sing and dance. I'm like, that's me, I'm gonna be Shirley Temple Black, okay? So she could sing and she could dance and she was young and I saw my talents in her, just watching TV. And, it, and so in my heart, that was my desire and God sees and he knows your heart. But the Bible also says that you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. He plants that 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 seed, that, that, that glimpse of yourself. And your dream is, I don't know if you've noticed, your dream is connected to your passion. It's connected Indeed. to your talents, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you wonder like, well, what am I, okay, what are your talents? What is it that you're just good at? What is it, is it that you do that people recognize and say, you know, you're pretty doggone good at this, that, or the other. So somewhere along the line, that has something to do with, uh, with not only your dream, but your destiny and your purpose. Mm -hmm. So you, you can, so if, if you want to pursue that purpose with the strength of the things that God has put, the, 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 the deposit that he put in you. And so with that in mind, you know, um, I, I, I wanted to sing, like, like I told you the story before, I thought it was gonna be gospel, but God opened the door because he wanted me to, to, to go beyond the four walls of the church. Mm -hmm. and, but but at, at the same time, never leave the four walls of the church. He wanted, wanted to use me in that in, in that totality. But um, the singing opened the door for the acting because the, the, uh, the urban play circuit, like in the mid eighties, they started inviting mainstream singers to be a part of the play to come make a guest appearance, you know? So I started, I teach somebody, uncle, somebody, cousin, Junebug, whatever. But at that time I said, you know, I, I was really, I'm like, this is the door opening for the acting, but I knew I was not an actor yet. All the time I spent listening to Aretha Franklin and Gladys Knight and Stevie Wonder and honing my skills as a singer, I know that the actors did the same thing. You know, watching certain people on film and studying and becoming a thespians, you know. And so yeah. I said, Shirley, if you just keep your mouth shut and just watch and just be a blank canvas and let the director direct you and paint on you, you know, and you learn and you glean and you watch and you glean and you learn and you glean, just like you did when you were learning how to sing with Aretha Franklin and everybody else, then one day you will become an actor. It's amazing because the people that I saw on television, people I saw on the big screen, whether it was like uh, Billy Dee Williams or Malik Yoba or, or Clifton Powell, Jack A. Harry, different Robin Gibbons, Clifton Powell used to show me little things and, 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 you know, give me little tips and show me how to enter in and things like that. And I would also just watch. And then one day he said, Miss Shirley, stop, stop saying you're not an actor. He said, you are an actor. So for me, when the actors declare you an actor, now I feel like I have the right to call myself an actor. I went from being auntie somebody to holding lead roles, sometimes girl doing three or four plays at the same time, okay? Sure. But then that opened the door because those plays turn into film. Mm -hmm. And I just recently did a film uh, that's gonna come out on Netflix in the fall. It's a Christmas film called, it's called The Matchmaker. And I played The Matchmaker. So I'll let you know and I'll have it on social media, you know, Ooh, when I'm that excited. happens. But, but, but I'm saying that God, not only is he the giver, but the keeper and the fulfiller of the dream. And so I've seen so many dreams come true for the dreamers, be encouraged, whatever God's, whatever he's spoken over your life, Whatever he said he would do, baby, he will do it because he watches over his word to perform it. And it might not seem like it's going to happen. You're in the you're in the waiting room. You're you're in boot camp. You're in the meantime. And sometimes that yeah. meantime is pretty mean. <laughs> you, might, you, might, you might feel it's, more, it's not a dream. It's a nightmare. But this is the place where God processes you. This is the place where you learn. This is the place where he makes the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. This because he's not going to take he's not going to take you nowhere. He can't keep you. And this is the place where you 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 should be mindful to not despise the process 
Mm. or you'll abort the purpose. You don't want to miss the purpose. So you want to mm. embrace the process, knowing that it's going to turn out for your good. And, 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 and one day, at the appointed time, he's going to raise the curtain and introduce you to the world and all of your giftings, everything he's put in you. Ooh. That's really a gift for everybody. He's going to reveal you. But in the meantime, just be patient. While you wait on the Lord, the, the word says he'll renew your strength. He says you'll mount up on wings as an eagle. You'll run and not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. So waiting on the Lord is not being idle. Waiting is being active, actively mm -hmm. pushing forward and pursuing and stirring up that gift that's in you. you the, the, the beautiful thing about today for young people today, as opposed to when I was coming up, you got the world wide web. Baby, you can get Googleicious on anything you want to know. <laughs> you can take a master class, honey, voice lessons, dance lessons, uh, acting, uh, how to how to write a TV script. I just saw Shonda Rhimes, you know, has, uh, doing a master class. So everything is at your uh, disposal. So yes. it's like if you do the possible, then watch God do the impossible. Oh. Um, you know what? I tell my mother all the time, she's, uh, you know, not as uh, tech savvy as, as the kids are. And I tell her all the time, Ma, Google, 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 everything you need to know. My, you heard me, Shirley, Miss, uh, Shirley Murdoch say it herself, get Googleicious, ma'am. Get Googleicious. <laughs> get Googleicious. <laughs> tell me what has been your biggest accomplishment so far to date for you. My biggest accomplishment personally is being a mother, mm. being a mother to a wonderful son, you know, uh, and, and being a wife and um, as well as my music. But that fulfills my life. My family fulfills my life. You know, even if, uh, you know, if, if the records aren't out there, you know, something that, that Larry Troutman asked me when I when I first came to him, he said, do you want a career or do you want a hit record? You know, hit records go up the charts and down the charts, but it takes time to build a career. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, I'm really also happy that I've been able to, to be in, in this business and survive this business for over 35 years, probably nearly like 40 years now. You know, and, and to still be relevant, you know, and to still have have my music listened to and sampled and uh just like i listened to aretha franklin and gladys knight there are a lot of young girls who grew up listening to me kelly price oh, will yeah. tell you that uh jennifer hudson will tell you that i remember when i met mariah carey she talked about how much she loved my music and um coco from swv you know just so many but it, I'm, I'm really honored but i know what that how I felt about you know, the people that I love, who I listen yeah. to. So to be that for a generation is really, it's humbling and it's and it's really an honor that somebody will pay you some attention, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think you know just 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 the totality of what um, I've been able to accomplish in my life. You know, I I just pray that my I want to leave a legacy of positivity, you know, and a legacy of love and positiveness, you know, and continue deposit into this music atmosphere of, of of words of words and lyric because words are spirit and life you know you can we can speak life with our tongue and we can speak death to our tongue Ooh. with our tongue and i want Ooh to wee. make sure that that I, I speak life that maybe somebody's life is better because of what i say and not only just what i say but that my audio matches my video that my walk matches my talk you know mm -hmm. and so uh, i hope i answered your question oh yeah you don't know. <laughs> I can't even get the words out. Oh, you done did more than that. <laughs> you done more than that, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> now, who would you like to collaborate these, these days? Who do you, you want to collaborate with? Well, I would love to collaborate with Stevie Wonder because he's oh. one of my one of my idols, you know, my icons, you know. And then, you know, and and my, and my good friend Eddie Levert from from, <laughs> from the OJ's. Oh. Uh, oh. You know, I love I love his voice so much. He's a he's my dear dear friend, and we also did a we did Candy Burris's play together, a, a mother's prayer. We play we play husband and wife, um, in that play, and we did a song together. But I wanted to do you know a, a song you know that's relevant for for now. Um, yeah. But I would love to collaborate with with uh, some of the younger artists because I think that it'd be so wonderful if old school, new school, which I just call it school, <laughs> if yeah. we could collaborate because, <laughs> because I think that there's an exchange that would be uh, beneficial to everybody. Because mm -hmm. if you look at if you look at it like a, a and I've, I've said this before, but like a runner running a relay race, 
the person that's running that's got the baton in their hand they're running up to meet up with the person that's that's in front that's going to go further mm -hmm. but at some point they both have to hold the baton together with it to make the exchange if they don't hold it together it's it, it'll be easy to drop it right. so there are things that we know things that we've um some some blood sweat and some 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 wisdom that we've learned through our own blood sweat and tears mm. things that we know about how to how to, how to have longevity you know how to conduct yourself in this business um some of the pitfalls that maybe we fail to maybe we can we can we can show them okay well don't do that you know or do this or don't do that and um and but but there are things that they have to offer as well you know they have this energy and they're so innovative and they have been googleicious you know they know how to use technology you know we, it would take us a while to make a record honey they could put out about four or five records out in a month you know what i mean and so you know every everything that we did in the studio it was meticulous you know it was line up on line and and we stacked our vocals and we had to match them and things like that whereas you know if if, if today if they might be a little off they can melodyne and tune it up a little bit or or copy it and, and send the hook down down the track and you're done but <laughs> But 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 they have some things to contribute, and and I, I try not to be so hard on the 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 the, uh, the young people because yeah. you know I believe that every generation deserves the opportunity to express their truth in their own language. Mm -hmm. So you know their language might not exactly be my language, but I think we can come together, you know, and and and, and translate, <laughs> and so that so that we can come together and 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 make that exchange you know and so uh um, especially like a lot of times i'll get on i'll get on clubhouse you know and i might jump into a room and it's, it, it floors me how how welcoming they have been when i come on they're like ladies and gentlemen we got an icon i'm gonna go like who who where where <laughs> you know on the, at, at the clubhouse and they'll listen to you know to advice They'll, because I think they know that I care about them and what I'm saying is coming from the heart and I want to make this deposit is going to make them better. And so um, it's, it's it's really nice to make that exchange. But I would love to collaborate. I know Neil, Neil said he wanted to do something with me some uh, some years ago. I would still love to work with Neil. He, he actually uh, sampled one of my songs, Computer Love, him and Jemai. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so did uh, Justin Bieber. Uh, yeah. And um, oh gosh, who else? Um, I mean, a, a lot of the younger artists, you know, have have sample of Computer Love, and I, I co-wrote Computer Love, so that's one of my babies, you know. So, oh. so Computer Love got a lot of kids and grandkids throughout the year. Oh yeah, know? yes. So <laughs> it's, it's amazing. So, but I, I I love I really have love for them, and I think that they can feel when you have love for them. They can also feel when you're oh. being judgmental, and yeah. so therefore the walls that come up. But I'm like, let's let the walls down. Let's make this exchange. Let's make each other better. Let's all walk away better by what we share with one another. Hmm. What are you working on these days? What do you got cooking up? What are you growing? Well, I got in the crock pot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a project with well, the working title is called Life Songs because, you know, hmm. I've always sung about life and life is not only, um, you know, that spiritual part of you, that connection with God, but it's also your relationships, you know, husband, wife, mother, daughter, sister, brother, you know, all of those things that, that, that make us who we are and so i want to i want to have a project that i call it like a it's a buffet or like a one-stop shop meaning that if you need encouragement uh, i want you to, to go to this project and get encouragement if you need inspiration if you if, if you want if you want to sit in sit in the presence of god i want to sing some songs that would just put you in the presence of god because in his presence is healing in his presence is peace in his presence is joy in his presence is deliverance whatever you need is right there in his presence but then you know, also come from a funk background so i want a little funk on that thing you know hey. so just so just you know just because so oftentimes we get so limited, Tabitha. You know, yeah. either your gospel, your R and B, your jazz, your country, and so I would love to. I would love to co collaborate with various artists from different genres and just have this this big gumbo, you know, Ooh. of music, you know, um, on this project called Life Songs. So it's not exclusive; it's inclusive to anybody who wants to to put some some positivity about life and love and relationship into the atmosphere so that's the working title and the first song uh, on there now is um is the song that the single that we have out now people get ready mm. mm -mm -mm. oh goodness now how can you how can your fans new fans that are trying to find out you know about your new projects upcoming things you have going on how can they find you on on your platforms 
Okay, well, People Get Ready is out and it's available on all digital platforms. And if you go to my Instagram, you can find me at Shirley Murdoch, the number four real, R-E-A-L. And on that Instagram, you'll also find uh, a link to my YouTube channel. Um, I, I have, I would love for you to, to, to like it and to, to, to subscribe. So you, you'd be the first people to know what's going on when I got, some, got something going on. And um, so there you'll find the, uh, the video for the, for people get ready, which is uh, a remake of the Curtis Mayfield and, and the impression song people get ready. Cause I came up in a time, you know, when the music, uh, the artists always, the music reflected what was happening at the time and with uh, mm -hmm. everything that's going on with George Floyd, you know, the, the trials going on yeah. now and, and, you know, and the pandemic and how many people have lost lives and, um, and just the vitriol that's in the atmosphere. We wanted to, to make a deposit into the atmosphere of, 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 of hope and healing and unity. So we thought that that would just be the perfect song. And you can also find me at, on Twitter at Shirley Murdoch. And um, uh, my husband and I are co-pastor and pastor of a, 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 one, a, a, a church without walls. It's called uh, Praying For You. And that website is praying, P-R-A-Y-I-N-G, the number four, Y-O-U dot org. And so if you go there, you can find all of our services. Girl, we got Bible study. We got uh, today at noon Ooh. and at Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have, uh, we call the prayer wall. So people can call in to, uh, to our free conference call number or check our Facebook pages and we'll tell you, you know, uh, that, that, that the prayer wall is open or you can leave your prayer request right there and we'll lift it up to the Lord. Trusting God for the answer. And, and my website is Shirley Mur is Shirley Murdoch Life Songs.com. So I think I covered it all. Where you oh, yeah. Up, I, and, and I'm also on um Clubhouse. <laughs> there it is. Look, yeah, so that's if everything. you missed that, I'm gonna run it back to you guys um once we're done so you don't miss a thing. Um Miss Murdoch, I have one more question and I'll ask all of my guests. If you could look a younger Shirley Murdoch in the mirror right now, this very minute. What would you say to her? I would say stay on the path. Everything that happens in your life, um, good, bad, ugly, God uses everything. He don't waste nothing. Because if you change anything, you would not be who you are today or where you are today. So live, live no regrets, you know, but, 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 but be, be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. Continue to be true to yourself and stay on the path. That would be my advice. Hmm. Mm -mm. Well, um, Ms. Murdoch, I want to thank you so very, very much for joining me on today. And you gave me um, you gave me life. Um, whatever it is, I don't know. You know, people go through a lot of things and sometimes we need a, I'm from the South and, and it's called confirmation for me. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, myself, I'm not saying I'm not trying to be selfish, but I'm going to tell you uh, what you have done for me today. <laughs> you have giving me confirmation to a lot of things going on in life just by who you are. I was not expecting this, but you gave what you were supposed to give to me and I can't thank you enough. It has been more than a pleasure, more than a pleasure. I love you. I've loved you since I was a young girl. My mother listening to your songs. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> on a Saturday while y'all was cleaning the house. <laughs> on a Saturday, cleaning up. You better not say nothing either. Get that floor clean. And you better not say nothing while my song on. <laughs> <laughs> tell your mama I said hi. And God bless her heart and all her parts. <laughs> mama, she said hello. She's in here. She's been in here the whole time watching you. She loves you to death. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. And I'm My looking pleasure. forward to your future projects and you have an amazing Amazing day, Ms. Murdoch. You too, baby. God bless you. Take care. Thanks. God bless See you ya. too. See ya. You guys, um, let me tell you, today, you never know what you're going to get with a lot of my guests. Um, Ms. Murdoch has, has blessed us on In My City with a lot to process. There's a lot of you out there that are going through things, and I'm no exception. None of us are perfect, but we all have to understand that we can speak life or death with this thing right here. This thing right here is a little bit more powerful than you know. So try, try to find that positivity. You always want to focus on speaking life into a situation and focus on speaking life into someone versus tearing someone down. You got, and I'm no exception because, you know, when we get mad, there's some things that we say. It's some things that, you know, we do. And, and, and a lot of us, we take our anger out and it comes out here. Be careful with that because you have the ability to either tear someone down or build someone up with that thing. 
that is going to do it for In My City. Again, I wanna thank Ms. Shirley Murdoch for her time. She gave, you understand what I'm telling you? She gave more than what I was expecting. She sang y'all a little something. She sang, sang up in here for y'all. You hear me? That's why I tell y'all, y'all gotta join me. Keep it coming, keep it, I'm gonna keep it coming, keep it coming. I've got, a, I've, y'all know I've got some more people on, um, on the calendar coming up for the month of April. Stay tuned, don't miss it. You guys, follow Miss Shirley Murdoch. Go to her Instagram page. Go to the Praying For You website. I've already checked into everything. I'm a member of everything. I know what she's got going on and you're not gonna be sorry. That lady is is more than just the as we lay lady or the go on without you, Shirley Murdoch. Y'all felt it today. Y'all were privy to see and hear and feel what she gave today. Thank y'all so much for joining me. Mom, you heard what she said. Family out there, friends out there, fans out there, followers. Y'all got to take heed to that. It is serious. You got to, what's, what's for you is for you. Can't nobody take that away from you. That's going to do it for In My City. You guys, um, make sure you stay tuned. I've got a lot more great things coming up. Take care. <laughs>